What is up, everybody? Tyler with TCD University for the Card Game Universes, and today I'm going to be doing a deck profile on my Goro Daemon deck that I made for this week's Retro Round 2 Campus Championship. Now, for you at home who don't know much about me personally, uh, I played Goro Daemon, the, the OG Goro, um, pretty much my entire career until he rotated out. He's a an old lover of mine. And I mainly built this deck just to have fun. Um, it's not, I think, the best Goro deck, but it's something that I wanted to try out and show you guys. So, uh, with that, let's hop right into it and see what he does. So, first thing we need to talk about is what does Goro do? He has a one ability that says, three, two, one. All right, first off, let's talk about what does Goro do. His first ability says R after you take damage from an unblocked attack. Reduce the damage you would take by one. Now, this is a very cool ability because this doesn't lower the damage of an attack. Um, this just says that the damage you are taking is reduced by one. It is weird wording, but it means that a lot of things that say if your opponent plays an ability that would reduce the damage of your attack, this does not apply to it. It's a weird workaround. Um, it isn't extremely powerful because one damage on a 13 damage attack isn't really going to save your life unless, you know, they've hit you with three or four attacks. It, it'll, it'll do very little. It, it moves the needle, but not a whole lot. His second ability is the one that I mainly focused this build around and what I think his better ability is. And it is after you, after one of, after your attack is blocked. <laughs> Your next attack is plus X damage and plus X to its control check. X equals their block modifier plus one. If you have more momentum, you draw one card. I never got to see more momentum than my opponent. Um, that's just how it worked out. It's, uh, I don't get to play Fatality in Retro. It is a banned card, so eh, what are you going to do? Um, I do instead get to play a whole bunch of throws, which could help with it if you went to a longer game, but that's not necessarily what happens in universes as a whole. So it... It didn't the the draw effect. It didn't really come in, but the hey, you're not allowed to block any of my things because my throws are just going to get stronger for it. Definitely did. Um, with that said, let's get into the attack lineup and sort of talk about what it was built around. Uh, the big card that I built the whole attack lineup around was Shokin Grab. Worth noting that this Goro E does not count because my name is Goro. It only applies to the Goro with the four hands. Uh, in the big muscles, not the Goro with the headband and the big muscles. It is because of this little thing down here, the 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 license that it comes from. It's unfortunate. It would have been real cool, but that's whatever. The real part about this card that I like is the plus one damage for each five difficulty throw or five difficulty attack in my discard pile. Every throw in this, every attack in this deck is a throw, and they're all five difficulty. So the whole idea kind of was I'll play choke and grab as my first attack. Give it plus seven, eight damage. They're going to have to block it. And then that kind of just sets up the rest of my string to hopefully kill you. Um, that's the idea, at least. Um, uh, a good way to facilitate that is with Chinchi Gaichi. Uh, this is the only tag of his that I'm playing because it's the only throw with a five diff in his lineup. Um, it says... Uh, if it's blocked, your next attack gets plus X damage. X equals your opponent's block modifier plus one. So I get a double dip with Goro's ability. And after a Shokin grab, uh, that is real good. This just sort of says, I'll play this, give a bunch of damage, make you block it. And then I'll play this, give it a bunch of damage. And when you block it, because it has a bunch of damage, the next attack, you're not going to want to block. Because uh, it's going to have an insane amount of damage. Uh, that's sort of the idea behind uh, that whole mechanic i guess um that's what i was going for that's why that's in the deck uh the next throw we'll talk about though is vicious madness this uh is just a very very powerful throw it is desperation four but it still counts with a shoken and grab and it is a four mid for eight those are awesome awesome stats and if you lose to vitality camp you're partial blocked not necessarily the best thing in this character because you kind of want your attacks to be blocked but it does say that when this is killing them um they might not have the block available to hit to take the eight damage um, or the whatever damage, and they'll just die from it. It's it's just a very strong throw in the game right now. Um, next one we'll talk about is Death Valley Faceplant. 
this is in here mainly for a little bit of defense. Uh, gaining two vitality and committing your foundation is pretty strong in a, in a character that has 35 vitality and wants to uh, reduce the damage of attacks coming in. Um, it's just a little bit of survival if they if they happen to block it, um, which I don't know why they would, but it's it's there as like a deterrent. It's it, here's five free damage in a stun one, and then along with that, uh, five four spider spider suplex uh, gain three vitality on a thirty five life character is really cool. Um, it's just like it's just to uh, elongate that. It's also a three mid for six, which is. It's pretty strong. Six damage is all right, um, but it's mainly the the gain three of vitality. That's like crazy in this character because you really want to make that vitality last. Um, but that's all the attacks. Let's now move on to the actions and the assets of the deck. First, we'll talk about actions, and I'm only playing for them, and that's Confine. This card is super duper cool. I'm mean, enhance, add one card from your momentum to your hand, and then discard this from the card pool. I'm playing nothing but throws, so I will always be getting momentum and being able to pick those up whenever I want. Uh, selectively pick those up when I want as a five-hander is really cool. Also, if my opponent tries to reduce the damage of my attack, I can negate it. So when I give a bunch of damage because they blocked my attack, and then uh, they say, cool, now I'll just reduce that damage so I don't have to block this next one, I'll say no to that. It's... It's cool defense, but it's mainly to pick up the momentum that I'm going to be getting no matter what. And that's all my actions. Let's move on to assets. First one is Omega Shield, uh, Omega Sword, and Owl Shield. This is in here uh, for a little bit of damage. There are a few attacks in here that actually uh, only two of these attacks don't have blocks, but the other blocks on the other attacks are real good. So I'll get plus two or plus three damage on some of my throws, which is awesome. And then being able to block however many times I'm able to is pretty strong it's it's just a very cool defensive piece under earth we're playing and then we're playing one one Kaludus. It's talking a little fast right now i'll slow down a bit so i don't uh trip over my words so much this is just like selectively flip stuff that i don't want to deal with um everything is going to be dealing damage no matter what unless they have some sort of ability that negates it but that doesn't matter because everything's a throw so they probably won't want to use it unless it super duper matters um so being able to say that once a turn you get to flip something, it's all right. It's good. And then if you hit a desperation, if you if, if you hit deadlock because you kind of forced it into that, um, giving every one of your throws plus six damage is like you're you're killing them no matter what. And then we're playing two Jean team Japan. This is an amazing card in Goro. It basically just says you have plus one to uh your checks to play attacks. That's just awesome. Uh, your last enhance. Every single turn is going to be my next check gets plus one. That's great. And then sometimes if you really, really need to, you can destroy to add to, to, to lessen your progressive difficulty. But that never really happened and probably won't. It's mainly for the plus one of your checks for the rest of the turn um, that makes that card very, very strong. And that's all my actions and assets. Let's move on to the foundations. Now, the first group of foundations I'm going to be talking about is my aggressive foundations. And the most aggressive foundation in this deck is Servant of Ares. Uh, the commit for plus four damage to a throw says that they're going to be they're going to have to start blocking your throws, which is exactly what you want to make sure that you get to just like run rampant. And then this flip minus lose two vitality to flip one of your opponent's foundations. Again, something that you don't want to deal with. Flipping it over is really good. It's mainly for the damage though, because plus four damage on a throw is like crazy. Um, then we're playing three surveyor. Um, this is just like plus one to my hand size for every surveyor I have out because everything again is a throw and is going to be dealing damage. They will all go to my momentum and it's very just awesome. Just be like, yeah, I'll just keep picking these up and killing you with it. It, uh, it's, it puts your opponent on an extreme clock that they have to, uh, that they have to deal with. Um, none of the th attacks in the deck are lows though. So like the, the plus three damage to a low doesn't really matter, but it's mainly to pick stuff up. Uh, next is Key to Humanity's Freedom. Uh, I'm playing, as you saw, like four assets. So giving my throws plus two damage and then plus two damage is great. And then if I really, really need to, I can remove it to get the asset in that I want to kill you this turn. Um, no asset is like really worth it, maybe besides Team Japan, but it still works. You know, it's it's a uh, it's a function of it. And that's all my uh, aggressive 
foundations. Next one, we're going to move to the defensive foundations. And this is a big pile because you kind of need it in Goro. Um, the first one is going to be energy absorption. This card is insane in this character. This says that every single attack gets minus two damage. And when you have more vitality than your opponent, which you probably will, uh, all your attacks get plus two damage and on in a few, or a few of your attacks get plus whatever damage and their attacks get minus damage. It is awesome. 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 In this deck, this is so good. So, so good. It's, it's honestly one of the cards that you might like want to, uh, review your hand to try to get in the first turn it is that powerful um next is tough as pumpkin junior high it's very good to just say minus one damage flip minus three damage minus four damage on an attack is just awesome it means that you don't have to block something or that you can make sure that you don't just don't take any damage at all it's just a very good uh damage negate in the same window uh wall of goro this is a uh, the same ability on Goro. It's it's a slightly better Tough as Punk in Junior High because it does the same thing that Goro does in that it doesn't reduce the damage of an attack. It reduces the damage that you would take. So this says minus three damage, minimum one. Goro says take that minimum one away. It's minus four damage no matter what. Um, it's just good. It's awesome. And you can sometimes pick up a... You can draw a card if you really, really need to. Um, it, it'll... It'll maybe come in handy one of these times. Um, next, Solemn Exorcism. I'm a five-hander. I can, with this card out, I can say, well, I'll build out my whole hand, which I really need to do, and then I'll, if I need the defense, I'll commit and draw a card. Or Breaker 2 after you block a weapon attack is really good. There's a lot of really good weapons in this game. Um, then, we're going to be playing the second Saintly Beast. Uh, again, if you need to block something, minus speed is really good for that. Or... If you have an attack that you know is about to kill your opponent, giving it plus speed to make sure that they can't block it is, like, great. Uh, the last attack in your turn, getting a bunch of speed to make sure that it definitely kills them is awesome. And at Deadlock, you get to start flipping stuff. So, you know, cool little f defensive piece. Again, in the realm of blocking, uh, Guardian of the Spirit Sword. Minus two speed, sometimes minus sp three speed is great. Flip, discard a card, add an asset to your hand is awesome if you're going to... If you know that this is like the last attack that they're going to be playing or you need a cool block on one of your assets, uh, getting this out after that is a uh, good. It's awesome. If you if you have a bit of a longer game, being able to set up with that is great. Um, another card specifically for blocking is Bakery Poster Girl. Reducing the speed of an attack to zero was awesome. You don't have a whole lot of resources to play with because you're a five-hander. So being able to guarantee that you get to block one thing when you really need to is just great um same thing with a uh, protecting the protector is you don't have a lot of resources so being able to generate the momentum that you can generate because every single attack is a throw and then saying that if they try to get rid of any of your foundations in any way um canceling that is like super important for a five hander there's probably a little more in this deck that should deal with a foundation destruction but it's kind of a little stacked as it is so I didn't really want to put it in. Um, and then the last defensive piece is refusing to let go. Um, taking an attack to minus two damage off of its printed and then giving it an extra minus one because you're not going to block it is just awesome. It's it's a very good defensive piece in Goro. I don't think I really need to explain more than that. It just uh, It's just an awesome defensive piece. Uh, the last bit of foundations that I want to talk about are uh, what I like to call the Deck's little helpers. Um, they're not necessarily offensive, but they're not necessarily defensive either. They're sort of things that help along with the deck um, in whatever way you see fit, uh, depending on the situations that you're in. And the first one we're going to be talking about is the Forbidden Techniques. Um, again, I'm a five-hander, so I don't have a whole lot of resources to play with. So being able to play this and gain a free, resources, uh, gain a free resource is uh, just really awesome. Um, that's why it's in the deck. It also has like a bunch of really cool static and breaker and a good block and stuff, but it's mainly for the, I'm a five hander. Give me an extra foundation. I really need it, please. Um, next, uh, sense of morals. Um, it's very easy to play. Uh, obviously this is like a staple foundation. It's just, it ignores progressive. So you can play it whenever. And then it's awesome. It's, it is perfect stun hate. Um, it says that on defensive, you can, 
block the one attack that you really need to block um, because you're a five-hander and you don't have a whole lot of opportunities to do that. Um, yeah, that's just... Sense of Morals is good. Get that card in front of your deck. Next, excuse me. Next is a uh, Puppet of the Curse Sword. Now, I uh, I have a whole lot more respect for this card than I, I did previously. This is like a free draw one, basically, um, that you just get to keep reusing. And it's awesome in a five-hander to just say, well, I'll commit this foundation, build in another foundation, and I didn't have to, like, worry about checking bad to do it. Uh, it's just, like, as you play the game more, and uh, it, it just elongates your your game. It, it slowly gets better over time. As long as this is in your staging area, it slowly gets better over time. I, I like this card a whole lot, and I'm probably going to be putting in more decks. And I think you should look at it and consider it, because I, I was definitely undervaluing that card. Um, and then the last card, Hell's Reach. This is just like a, sta a, a staple. This is like the quintessential staple in any of these three symbols. It's extremely easy to build. Um, it's very, very useful for what it does and just it readying itself either on offense or on defensive or on defense. It basically counts itself as like one extra foundation for whenever you need it. This is just an awesome card that you should be putting in all the decks that you can play it. It's just like the definition of a staple. Um, yeah. And there you have it, folks. That is my Goro Daemon deck that I built for this week's round two of Campus Champion of Retro Retro Round Two Campus Championship. If you would like to see this deck in action, you can go check out that playlist on the channel. Uh, again, I sort of built this deck because I love Goro. He's just a character that I've always had an affinity for, and uh, I just wanted to have fun with it. This isn't maybe the best deck that you could play under him. I'm sure you could do a lot better stuff, but it's something that I wanted to try out. And had fun with uh, I had fun doing it. Um, so if you enjoyed it, please leave a like. It's the single greatest way you can help the longevity of this channel. It shows YouTube that uh, this is content that people might want to look, might want to see. Um, if not, that's fine too. Thank you for clicking on the video and watching. It means a whole heck of a lot to us. It is more than enough, and we are eternally grateful for that. But enough rambling. I will end it here. Goodbye, and have a wonderful night.